Hello, and welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for joining me as I explore the wide world of pens. And we're going back to an old familiar favorite, the Jinhao 100 Centennial. And this video is going to have a story associated with it. We'll look at some pens, but we'll also talk about buying pens. So the new pen is the one with the white finials in a fairly deep red color. And for comparison, I put next to it the logoed Chinese red Jinhao with black finials. The black finials is obviously more in tune with that classic Parker dual fold look for a pen. I originally wanted to review this pen with another pen that I ordered, but that pen never arrived. Here's the order I placed on eBay at the end of December, which is the same time I placed the order for the one with the white finials from two different Chinese sellers. This one arrived in the normal two to three weeks, no problem. And the other pen followed the same shipping path but never made it from the consolidator in the States to the United States Post Office in order to deliver it to me. That final mile is done by the U.S. Post Office. And this was Orange Connects, you know, the shipping system that eBay has used for a while, and it's always worked incredibly well until this one time. And this video is now being made because I've received a refund for the pen that did not arrive. I had a nice dialogue with the seller and eventually they just sent me the refund. I told them I would rather have the pen. I preferred them to ship me the pen, but the pen seems to be out of stock, out of inventory. So therefore, I received a refund. So we're going to look at this pen, we're going to take it apart. We're going to compare it to some other Jin Hao's that I have. And then we're going to write with it just so you can see how that Jin Hao nib performs consistently with all the other Jin Hao nibs that I've had recently. And we're going to let Mr. Crab just show off him holding up these two great pens. Give you a wink. Mr. Sizemore is enjoying his view of these pens. So let's show you more, and the crabs give you a wink. Well, here I've disassembled the Jin Hao 100 Centennial in Chinese red with white accents. And I blame Doodlebud for this because he enjoys really taking things apart. And I have to admit it is fun, but not something most people would ever do. All the parts unscrew, like the th new 316s. You know, it's a nice thick wall, well made. I consider the threads are good. I'm not going to microanalyze them. It unscrews easily, and it's not something you're going to do very often. All the metal pieces that are chrome plated seem to have a very nice job done to them. This is an under $20 pen, so let's keep that in mind. The cap is what's most interesting. Inside the cap is an unplated brass screw, which I think is the best attachment method to use. So you can see there's a notch there that you would be able to put a screwdriver in from the inside of the cap, but you don't need to because all these things kind of screw together easily. So that screws into this metal piece that holds down the clip and then this top white finial gets screwed into that so the whole thing is very secure and one of the reasons why I took it apart was uh, when I got the pen this top finial the chariot wasn't at all lined up with the clip so I wanted to fix that so I took it apart the nib pulls out very easily as with almost every gin how that I've ever had you know, here we got the section, which is made very well. You got a nice metal ring there at the bottom. The rest of it's, you know, turned acrylic. That nice O-ring there, a nice big 
metal collar here to hold and secure that converter very well. A standard Jinhao nib. I'm waiting for them to really do something to upscale this one. You know, 18 uh, K uh, GP for 18 karat gold plate doesn't make any sense in a chrome plated nib. Your standard injection molded feed. Again, Jinhao, and, and they've been very consistent with that. And this nib collar, which is branded with the chariot. And some nice coarse threads there. The whole thing fits together well. I'm going to, you know, assemble it because we do have to write with this pen eventually. Here we have the pen reassembled, but I wasn't able to correct the orientation of the chariot and the inlay in that cap finial. Doing some checking on the internet, and here's some pictures from different pens that the chariot does seem to sometimes get out of orientation. Eh, as we know, QC is not. One of the fortes that is apparent in a lot of pens, yes, and there's an orange one, a lot of variety, and there's your difference between rhodium and gold colored trim, white and black finials, ah, great design. So here's some Jinhao 100s I just assembled. It's about half of my collection. I just wanted to show you the great range that they're doing now with this model. Similar to the Kaigalu 316, I think the Kaigalu 316 is still one-upping them as far as variety of resins, but these are enjoyable in their own way. And there's also different style clips that they use, and they both have this silver rhodium trim or a gold-colored plated trim. A logo here with a ball clip. Here's an arrow clip. Finial section, same material as the whole pen, which I enjoy. But I also enjoy the contrasting of different colored finials. And the white certainly puts it a different level from the other pens. And yes, you need to be careful and make certain that you clean off that section, the white section, because it can discolor from ink. Just one of those things, if you like the white, you got to clean it up. And we also have a variety of nibs. The nibs are colored based on the trim. And as you can see, the ring here is also colored. So they're very consistent in that. Here's an interesting Fude nib with a fairly decent upturn to it. Here's your standard fine, another fine, and here's a medium. I particularly like the mediums. They write very, very well. I think we need to show this one is more of an example of a medium. Nice tipping material. So this is, uh, to me, another example of how Jin Hao, Kaigalu Moon Man, have really, I think, done a lot to improve the quality and consistency of their nibs, and I enjoy writing with them. And we certainly couldn't overlook the two very nice check pattern pens that they make. These are double the cost of the normal pen, but that resin is certainly worth the extra money, at least to my eyes. So what ink to put into the Jinhao 100 Chinese Red pen, but this ink from Pen BBS certainly does have a red color to it. It's number 135 and it's Beijing. Take a look at the color card. It's definitely like a red brick color. Kind of on the dark side, a lot of brown. Chromatography is kind of what we would expect, but still some interesting colors there. With that kind of like brilliant teal turquoise color at the very top. I was able to get a pretty full fill, and that's after writing a little bit. And in the third fill, I pushed out a few drops, a la Wasky Squirrel's advice, and I think it's good. So I pushed out a few drops, got all the excess off of the nib before I started writing. So now is the time for some editorial comment, some dimensions, and see how this nib puts down that 10 BBS Beijing ink. So I think one of the downsides to these pens is the number of turns it takes to unscrew the cap. We're at two. Over two and a half turns, which is more than I would like to have for a cap. 
And I don't know the reason why a cat needs to have that many turns. You know, they could multi-thread these threads here. Still give you that same secure feeling of the cat being on, but they didn't do that. And this has been consistent throughout the model since the first one that I got. And we'll look at dimensions. And yes, you can jam the cap on. And yes, it does back weight to pen. And yes, it makes it very long. So as we know, nah, not something I'm going to be doing. I think the section's the right size. Here's the dimensions of the section. It's just a, a pleasurable pen to write with as typical of this classic dual fold style design. So let's put some ink on paper and sum it up. So this is a fairly smooth nib. You get a little bit of feedback, but not significant. It is a, a very fine nib. I'll check and tell you what I ordered, in case you didn't notice when I showed the auction or the listing on eBay. So let's rate this along with all the other Jin Hao 100. So I'm going to give it a 9.6. It's one check for build quality. It just fits together very, very well. It's one check for the aesthetics. I like the combinations and the varieties of resins and everything else. And the nib gets one check because Jin Hao is consistently good in their nibs. So I wish I could have showed you the other pen, but it never arrived. And that's probably out of hundreds and hundreds of uh, pens I bought from China. That's the first time that's ever happened to me. I'm okay with that. Occasionally, things don't work as they should. We'll see how that relates when I do another pen review. So thank all of you for watching. I hope you find a pen you enjoy writing with. And I like this ink color with this pen. Nice combo. Hope this video finds you safe, healthy, and happy. Enjoying life. Enjoying every day. I do. So we've reached the end of this video. And you notice how consistently this pen writes. And we're going to say bye. Until the next video.